Hello there, and welcome back to part 6 of the history of the Werneth Incline. For those of you who are just joining us, the beginning of our journey can be found in the links below. It began on the 31st of March 1842, with the opening of the Manchester and Leeds Railway's Oldham Branch between Middleton Junction and where we are currently located as Oldham Werneth. Werneth was the terminus of the Manchester and Leeds Railway and this is where we must bid them farewell for this video for we are travelling forward a few years. By the time engineer and contractor George Thompson had finished his work on the two tunnels connecting Oldham Werneth to the centre of Oldham on the 1st of November 1847, the Manchester and Leeds Railway had become part of something far grander. The Lancashire and Yorkshire Railway began its life on the 8th of July 1847, following the amalgamation of over 20 other local railways. But before we enter the tunnels, let's have a look at Oldham Werneth. The station was built originally to serve Platt Brothers of Oldham, a huge cotton spinning engineering company, their headquarters located in Werneth, employing more than 12,000 workers. This 1920s film by the Oldham Master Cotton Spinners Association shows Werneth Goods Yard and its heavy connection to the cotton industry. The engines, a Hughes 080, built between 1910 and 1921, and bringing up the rear, an Aspinall 080, built between 1900 and 1908. Both engines were designed for heavy goods work, so you can only imagine the noise and effort needed to take such a heavy load up the incline into Oldham. I will be covering Platt Brothers in a later video because there's far too much to go into at the moment. The railway was located in a cutting, so the main station buildings which straddled the two main lines below were at road level, connecting to Railway Street by a stone set road on the south side of the line. Werneth had two platforms, as well as an extensive goods facility, which included coal offices, stables and a 10 ton crane. The south of the station was very confined, resulting in one of the goods sheds only being accessible by turntable. By 1850, it had 10 passenger services in each direction, connecting all the mumps to Manchester Victoria, down the Werneth incline. Although several of these services terminated at Middleton Junction, where passengers needed to catch another service into Manchester. By 1938, you could catch a train direct from Oldham Werneth to Glasgow and Edinburgh. In 1970, Oldham Werneth lost all its station buildings, and the entire station was simplified, and all the passengers were given to protect themselves from Oldham's inclement weather were two brick-built bus shelters which were soon replaced by plastic bus shelters a few years later. The 1970s and 80s timetables appeared very reminiscent of the 1840s with all services terminating at either Oldham Mumps or Manchester Victoria. The 1990s fared better with Greater Manchester Public Transport finally acknowledging the existence of the extension to Rochdale. On 
on Saturday the 3rd of October 2009, the last trains to ever traverse the Oldham Loop departed Oldham Werneth for the last time. At 11.25pm, the station closed forever and is now part of a loading bay. Now, let's head into the tunnels. Furthest west is Wernoth Tunnel. Above the tunnel mouth is the crest of the Lancashire and Yorkshire Railway. Probably one of the oldest monuments remaining that represents the company. Looking through the darkness, you can clearly see the light beyond and our next destination. Wernoth Tunnel is 471 yards long and perfectly straight. This short cutting is between Wernoth Tunnel and Central Tunnel. And is the location of this image. Central Tunnel is slightly shorter at 449 yards and incorporates a curve to the north. Both structures are masonry lined throughout and filled with numerous refuges. However, neither have a ventilation shaft. Although closed in 2009, the route reopened in June 2012 as part of Manchester Metrolink's new line to Rochdale. This new lease of life was short as Metrolink soon rerouted the line through the streets of Oldham Town Centre. The 173 year old tunnels have had numerous plans since Metrolink abandoned them. A possibility of using them as a training centre for emergency services was seriously considered, but the plan has not seen much light recently. Due to decades of neglect, along the entire Oldham Loop by the usual suspects. Any possibility of reopening these structures to the public as a museum or cycle path seem highly unlikely. The tunnel linings were reported by drivers to be leaking like a bloody sieve. It was the only place on Metrolink where you needed windscreen wipers when it wasn't even raining. Thank you for staying with me on this short trip under Oldham. Why not subscribe and keep an eye out for us emerging back into the daylight for part 7. Please like and comment and let me know if I've missed anything. Until next time, sirrah.